how you can make the Word of God flesh to you. Welcome to This Word is Your Life with Pastor Alexander Arthur. Today, Pastor Arthur continues his study, Fighting the Good Fight of Faith. When it comes to faith, We have to understand the person who's behind it. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if faith prevails and we have to fight the good fight of faith, it will be helpful for us to know who is behind faith. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time and have declared it? You are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yes, there is no God. I know not any. Did you hear that? Look with me to verse 21. We're talking about the person behind faith. This is the God says that he doesn't know anyone besides him. So remember these, O Jacob and Israel, O word of life. For thou art my servant. I have formed thee, thou art my servant, O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. I want you to remember who is behind faith. He tells you he will never forget you. Because sometimes when we are in a hard place, we ask God, where are you? Hello, Jack. God, where are you? I mean, it seems like the world is crumbling down over me. Where are you, God, when I'm hurting? Where are you, God, when it doesn't seem like there's a way out of this situation? Where are you, God? Where are you? God says, remember, oh, Israel, oh, word of life, oh, covenant people, that's what Israel is, that, that thou shall not be forgotten of me. No matter what you see that you're going through. Oh, praise the Lord. Because sometimes we think that God has forgotten us. He will never, ever forget you. Look with me to verse 22. It says, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. I want you to know that the one who is behind faith is telling you your sins have been forgiven, have been blotted out, so you can stand up with boldness and courage and believe that that which has been promised you, you will one day, what, live it. Praise the Lord. Because sometimes we think that we've sinned an unpardonable sin. We've done something so wrong that our God cannot forgive us. I am telling you, don't let the devil put you in that vice. Hello, there's nothing that you would do that God will not forgive you. He is telling you here, you just return unto me. That's what repentance is. Return unto me. Hello, return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Go to 24, verse 24, the part B of that. It says, the part B, I am the Lord that maketh all things. Oh, Lord. How did he make all things? How did he make all things? Go with me to Hebrews. Oh, let me finish reading this. I'm the Lord that maketh all things. That stretched forth the heavens alone. That spread it abroad the earth by myself. He said, I spread abroad the earth by myself. Nobody else did it, but I did it by myself. Oh, glory be to God. I want you to know the person behind your faith. And the power behind your faith. That's why you can fight the good fight of faith and win because of who's behind your faith. Praise the Lord. He says, I spread abroad the earth by myself. How did he do it? Come with me to the book of Hebrews 
chapter 11. Oh, praise the Lord. Are we having fun yet? Look with me to verse 2. It says this. For a by it, talking about faith, the elders will obtain a good report. Verse 3. Listen to this. Through faith, we understand that the words, the worlds were framed by the word of God. Oh, this earth, God says he spread abroad the earth by himself. And he's telling that the way he did it was what his word. And the word of God, the Bible tells us that faith come up by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Which means that we can say it this way, through faith we understand that the words were framed by faith. Because the word of God is faith. We can say through the word of God we understand that the words were framed by faith. Because they are interchangeable. If faith come up by hearing and hearing by the word of God when you have the word of God that you are hearing like you're hearing now. Faith is coming. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want you to think about faith and the word of God as this. It's like water and wetness. Hello. It's like water and wetness. You can't get water and not get wet. And so you have water, you're going to get wet. And God wants you to know that his word and faith are the same. And if he framed the world by the word of God, he framed the world by faith. And if the earth was made by faith, the earth will respond to faith. Oh, did you get it? If the earth was framed by faith, then the earth will respond to faith. Praise the Lord. So what we have to do is that this faith becomes important to us. And we got to make sure that we release it out of us. Because the faith is in us. Faith comes about hearing. The hearing goes, when you hear the word, it makes a deposit in your spirit. It gets in there. The word, and this is why you don't want to wait until somebody speaks the word to you. So the faith will come to you. You got a mouth. You got lips. You got tongue. You do it. You open your mouth wide. And let God fill your mouth with his word. It got to be in your word before it can be on your body. It got to be in your mouth before it can get into your bank account. It got to be in your mouth before it can get into your marriage. Hello, it got to be in your mouth before it gets into your business to flourish. Whatever it is, open your mouth wide so the Lord can fill it for you. Oh, praise the Lord. That's what Psalms 8 to 1 verse 10 says. It says, open your mouth wide and let the Lord fill it himself. Praise the Lord. And he always fills it with his word. Now, it gets interesting. We're going to have some fun in the next 10 minutes. Be ready. <laughs> Put on your seat belts. It's going to be exciting. I have been to where we're going. And it's good. I have enjoyed it. And I'm about to share the joy with you. Praise the Lord. Are you ready? Well, praise the Lord. Now, think about this. If you're going to get what's on the inside of you to come out, as Philemon chapter 1 verse 6, that the communication of our faith is made effectual by acknowledging all the, or every good thing that is in us in Christ Jesus. So I have to use my mouth to make it happen. Would you agree? Amen. I have to use my mouth not only to eat ice cream, but also use my mouth 
to make it happen. What the Bible says. If I'm going to play the script that I read, that I read, I got to go out there and recite it. You know, sometimes some of these actors take on the character of the of the of the person they're playing, the role, thank you, so much so that they become like the person. Look at this woman that won the Academy Award playing the, the former Prime Minister of England. Uh, and she looked like they even, you're talking about changing her face and her mannerisms and everything. And they brought you know, people who, uh, who do makeups and all that to make this woman look like the former Prime Minister Thatcher and talk like. Even the, the previous year, the man who played the King of England, the King's Speech. He had to learn how to, to stutter when he didn't stutter himself. He had to listen to the director tell him, time to stutter! <laughs> it is amazing how we follow the orders of a human director. But when it comes to our God, we fight it. Help us, Lord. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Because really what God wants us to do is to be like what Jeremiah said, like party in his hands. He is a potter and we are the clay. So that he can melt us, mold us, and make us to become vessels of gold, vessels of honor, holy, fit vessels for our master's good use. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, did I say for you to go somewhere? Not yet. You're paying attention. God bless you. <laughs> All right. Come with me to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 11, we were there. Oh, you're going to be having some fun in a few minutes. Just get ready. Get ready. Hebrews chapter 11. Look with me to verse 7. It says, By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet. Whew. That will preach all by itself. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet. He had not, this is not something that has been yet been experienced by man. There had not been a rain. And yet God is asking this man to build an ark. And what made it become a piece and a portion and a part of the hall of fame of faith is because this man having not seen if you will today a spacecraft can believe that God says that a time is coming that people will have to fly and he starts building a spacecraft and imagine people coming around to look at the spacecraft and laughing at him and saying, what is that? This is God wanted men to fly who would have given them wings. There has never been rain. How come it is that you are thinking about building an ark? He says that by faith Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. What you have not seen as yet will come to pass through faith. What you have not seen as yet, that experience that you are believing God for, that you have not seen yet, is going to manifest by faith. But this is it. For it to manifest, you got to move. Something's moving. Something's changing. You got to move. If in fact you're going to have this 
thing that has not been seen yet, has not been experienced by you yet, has not been harvested by you yet, has not been experienced to the extent which you can say, this is what I've been believing God for, for you to get it, you have to move. You have to move. And how do you move? Well, you move by speaking it and then doing it. If you don't speak it, you are never going to do it. If you hadn't said that you were coming to church, you would still be sleeping in your bed. Even though most of you got here late. But we love you. We still love you. I said we still love you. Now, if I'm going to say it, then it must be that something that I say has a way of bringing what I have not yet seen to be seen. What is it that goes with something, what is it that goes with what I say to get hold of what I haven't seen and bring it out so I can see it? What is it about opening my mouth wide and filling it with the word of God and speaking that word that will bring to pass what is it that I haven't seen yet? Are you ready? Yeah. Now, God lives in the realm of the spirit, right? Everything that he wants you to have is in the spirit. That's why every good thing is in you in Christ Jesus. Every good thing is in you is in Christ Jesus. Because it's in you, we can see it. Did you get it? Because it's in you, we can, now it's in you, it's yours, but we can see it. But what God has done is that he has kept it not from you, but he has kept it for you. He has kept it for you and kept it from your enemy. That means if the enemy wants to get it, he has to go into you to get it. But because it's in Christ Jesus and he can, his arms are too short to fight with Christ Jesus, he can get it. And so it's in you but cannot be seen. But if you want to see it, if you want to see what's in you, you got to say it. If you want to see what's in you that is good in Christ Jesus, you got to say it. How do I know I got to read the script? If when I read the script, I find it out. Because listen, your voice is your address in the spirit. Your voice is your address. Your voice print is like, just like fingerprint is in the natural. Voice print is in the spiritual. Hello. And so when you each one of us, our fingerprint makes us unique and no one else shares the same fingerprints with us. Thank God for that hours. Somebody will commit a crime and they will come pick you up. Oh, check their fingerprint. It doesn't match. Hey, praise the Lord. That was an eye. Now, so thank God for that. What God has done with fingerprint, he has also done with, with voice print. And so your voice, well, let me prove that to you. Go with me to, um, to Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. Quickly. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day, the very first day that thou didst set your heart to understand, like you do here this morning, in your all you're getting, get understanding. That if you want to see it, you got to say it. Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard 
and I am come. Ooh. Ooh, glory. Hey, hey, hey. I am come for thy words. I am come for thy words. And so your words become the highway that the angels travel to bring what's in the spirit back to you so you can see it in the natural. Oh, praise the Lord. That's how you fight the good fight of faith. You use your voice. Your wo- That's why Jesus said you can have what you say. So I am come for thy words. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is too difficult with God. If you can believe it, it can be done unto you. Praise the Lord. All you have to do is if you believe it, say it. Oh, glory be to God. I told you you'll be excited. Let me give you one more thing to tell my time is up, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. <laughs> yes, praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, don't you like it that as there are, what, seven billion people in the face of this earth? Do you know our voices are all different? That if you start speaking, it's very likely that somebody can tell that that's you. They don't even have to, ooh, they don't even have to see you. Just by hearing your voice. And so what is it about this voice that can identify you so uniquely, so exceptionally, so extraordinary, that no one else can share it other than you? God did it that way. Oh, listen. God did it that way. Because that is how God is. God himself has a voice. And his voice, he wants you to hear. He wants to hear his voice so much. Because I'm telling you, one voice of God's word that you ever hear, you will never ever be the same again. I was marked when I heard the voice of the Lord. I've heard it many times since then. I should say several times since then. Oh my God, I know the voice of God. It doesn't have to be loud that I'm being loud now. It can be a still small voice. I remember in the year 1999, walking on campus at Fisk University, and I heard the voice of God, just like I'm speaking to you now, and he said, son, how long would you disobey me? By this time, six years have gone by when he told me to go into full-time ministry, and my faith was not strong enough. I got students and uh, students, children were well, children, <laughs> young ones in college who had to, be, the tuition had to be paid. If you walk on, work on campus, you get a tuition free, you pay for the residence or the boarding, but tuition is free. And so I allowed reasoning. And I kept saying, well, one is out, the other one is coming out, and let's keep it that way. And when they're all gone, the Lord, I will surrender. I surrender all. <laughs> and when I heard the voice say to me, how long will you disobey me? I knew that was a voice of my master. And I began to weep. It changed me. I, it's like I had seen an apparition. And so I were well, ghosts. <laughs> and, and, and so I went to the dean's office, said to him that my God has spoken to me. I am getting out. 
of this place. I'm leaving. I got to go. So you can't go. You signed a contract. You should know better. And that is true. You sign a contract academically each year. But I knew I heard from the Lord. And somehow or another, he will make it right. All he wanted was for me to obey him. And I did. And the young the man, the dean said to me, okay, this is what we're going to do. I will let you come out at the end of the semester, but you got to finish. You, nobody leaves in the middle of the semester. And even though I play tennis with you, I'm not going to do that for you. <laughs> I said, okay, I finished the semester. To receive a copy of today's message in its entirety, write to us at Word of Life Christian Center International. When you write, be sure to include the name of today's message and your choice of either an audio or video copy. CDs and audio tapes are $5 and video cassettes or DVDs are 10 this series is available in its entirety at a special package price by calling 615-876-3086 or by email at pastor1 at lifewordcenter.org and requesting the series according to your faith. Oh, today we want to just uh, share a few things with you. I want to tell you that Word of Life Christian Center International has a worship experience that you certainly will want to one day experience it for yourself. You know, you see us on TV and Usually we edit it, and so what you get is not a full picture of what goes on in this sanctuary. And so uh, Pastor Carlos and myself want to invite you to come and go ahead and invite them. We'd like to invite you to join us at a service here at Word of Life Christian Center International. We are called international not just because it sounds good as a name, but we actually have ministries in other countries in other parts of the world. We have sons in the ministry in South Africa, as well as in Zambia, as well as in Canada. And so when you contribute to the word of life, you're also contributing to missions work in other parts of the world. And so we want to invite you. Our services start at 1030 on Sunday morning and at 7 p.m. on Wednesday evening. And we trust God that you will be led one day to come and, and be here and enjoy the service that we truly believe will impact your lives. May God truly bless you. And we often say this when we end our services, that Jesus, Jesus is Lord. And, and if all you're getting, getting get understanding. understanding. For the, the word of life changes, changes lives. And love never fails. fails. Be blessed. See you next time. Bye-bye.